there's a saying in Inazuma, Want are bandits, but the children of war. In times of tumult, even the harvest is a battlefield. For in this land of eternity, neighboring the Dark Sea, its people have suffered from a year of conflict and famine. Ever since the Vision Hunt Decree, ranks of oppressed people formed a resistance against the Shogunate, greatly affecting the land, turning it into seats of war. Most of the nation's residents left their homes, seeking refuge under the protection of either the Bakufu or its opposition. The one most affected by this is the island of Yashiori, where it was once split in half by the famed Musono Hitotachi and is currently home to torrential rains and mysterious illnesses. Today I'll be discussing the butterfly effect of the civil war of Inazuma and how it brought chaos on the people of Yashiori Island. Yashiori Island is the third unlockable area in Inazuma and its landscape is mostly filled with thunderous rains and dangerous monsters that dwell within. It is somewhat the no man's land of the war between the Sangunome resistance and the Shogunate army. This island affected many others because of the Tatarigami, a curse that was released from the body of the once great serpent, Orobashi. Before we start, I want to add some trivia, wherein the term Yashiori is a reference to the alcoholic drink known as Yashiori no Sake that was used to defeat the legendary eight-headed and eight-tailed Japanese dragon, Yamata no Orochi of Japanese mythology. This is somehow parallel to Orobashi, who was defeated in Yashiori Island, and how its skeleton currently rests there, and has an uncontrollable curse that brings ill to those exposed to it. So then, let us begin with the first chapter of how the war affected the island. Before the traveler arrived in Tevat, many events have since passed the change the landscape of Inazuma and their Archon. To summarize, let's back up during the Archon War, where Orobashi attacked Yashiori and fought against A. It was theorized that he was affected by erosion, a state where long-living beings experience loss of memory, personality, and power, similar to what Morax or Zhongli is experiencing right now. This can explain why he was first described to be a benevolent and respected god. But in time, his personality changed and suddenly declared war on the people of Narukami. By the end, he was defeated and his massive body now lies on the island. But something spawned after he died. It was the Tatarigami, a curse that came from Orobashi's lingering hatred. This curse can bring sudden illness and constant nightmares to those who were exposed to it. So to prevent this from spreading, A suppressed it by building three wards and appointed Kitain Bunso and his clan to serve as the Yashiori guardians. Fast forward to the year before the traveler's arrival, where the Sakoku Decree and Vision Hunt Decree were implemented and Watatsumi Island began to rise up against the Shogun's rule. As a side note, the Kitain clan, who were tasked to guard the Tatarigami, were now extinct for unknown reasons, which meant that the wards made by Raiden A are now left unguarded at present. Now going back to the war, when Sangonomi Kokomi became the priestess of her people, she organized her troops and appointed Goro as her general. At the same time, the Tenryu Commission is placed in charge of the Vision Hunt Decree, and Kujo Masahito is appointed as the general of the Shogunate army. Now, Masahito first planned to occupy Yashiori with his troops to use it as a launching point for a future invasion to Watatsumi Island. Masahito expected that once Watatsumi would be occupied, the rebels would have no choice but to surrender. Unfortunately, Masahito's troops were defeated and retreated back to their encampment. This is actually unexpected because it wasn't Kokomi's forces who beat them, but the exposure to Tatarigami. Masahito's troops were possessed by this curse, making them mad and having symptoms of intense bleeding and pain which could lead to death. We later learn that before Masahito's arrival to the island, some Sangonomiya resistance members were Orobashi loyalists and infiltrated the shogunate army using disguises. Their plans was to 
restore the dignity of our great Omikami, which meant Orobashi himself. However, these loyalists accidentally broke the wards and instead unleashed the curse that resulted in thunderstorms and never-ending rain we see later on. This also caused the people of Higi village to get sick, including the village head, Washizu, and the parents of Shuji, the kid we meet later on. Most of the villagers were forced to evacuate out of Hyashiori Island, but some insisted that they stay and try to fix the problem. This includes Yasumoto and his master Naoko, who tried to find a cure for the curse. Now it is speculated that the Fatsui had a part in this, because we later learned that Nathan was actually working for the Fatsui, and he was the one who taught the loyalists how to break the wards, with the goal of bringing back Orobashi. This is somewhat similar to what Tertaglia did with Osayel in Lie. The Fatui may have wanted another disaster to happen in Inazuma and had hoped to lure out the Raiden Shogun and expose herself in order to steal her gnosis, similar to what the Fatui planned with Morax. This plan was also meant to be kept in secret, which is mentioned in one of the waterlogged notes where it says, the above information is to be kept strictly confidential not a word to anyone, whether it be Her Excellency, the Divine Priestess, or our lowest ranking comrades, those with loose lips will face the consequences. Despite the secrecy, their plan misfired and instead released the Tatarigami, which caused the people to go ill or mad. Now we all know what the Tatarigami is, its real life counterpart is kinda similar to that in game. In Shinto religion, Tatarigami means cursed spirit, and are powerful spirits that bring death and destruction, fire and famine, plague and war, and all forms of calamity. They are some of the most powerful evil spirits that haunt Japan, and have done much to shape the culture and politics over the country's long history. They can also refer to powerful gods of destruction, or to the ghosts of powerful people. Some notable Tatarigami are Emperor Gozu, the bull-headed demon god, Yamata no Orochi, which was the inspiration used for Orobashi. Now for the second chapter, we will now explore the story behind the lost text. Personally, this reminded me of some Resident Evil plot, and it was interesting that the developers added this dark story into the game. To start, these lost texts are basically pages from a journal of a Kanju Commission soldier who was tasked with investigating Yashiori Island along with a small team. With Kuju Masahito's disastrous defeat, the Kuju clan assembled a team. This small team is comprised of five people, namely Gongo Zaimon, Suzuno, Kanemoto, Yamada, and the unnamed writer of the lost texts. Their names are quite forgettable, but later on, we will see how they are important in this story. In the first lost text we find at Fort Fujito, the writer describes their mission, which was to infiltrate Yashiori Island, eliminate deserters, and eliminate the pirates that roam the beaches, all in an effort to convince Kujo Masahito to return and resume his conquest of the island. The writer added that the Kujo clan does not believe the rumors about the Tatarigami, and was deeply dissatisfied with Masahito's behavior. He also wrote that Kujusara's rise to power was because her older brother got disfavored and demoted by the clan due to his defeat. The second lost text can be found in Musojin Gorge, and the writer and his team first went around the beaches to search for pirates and have been gathering the loot that the pirates had pillaged after they had slain them. Now, this is the text where we find out that the writer has become infected by the curse of which he said, My nose has been bleeding since noon, and I'm feeling dizzy and weak. Later on, the team came across a child who was Chuji and initially wanted to capture him to act as their guide. But we can assure that they have given up on this idea due to Chuji being safe when we first meet him. In the last sentence, the rest of the team starts having symptoms as well, and all of them are getting worse, coughing blood and having nightmares every night. For the third lost text that we find in the serpent's head, 
This was when the writer was starting to believe the rumors about the Tatarigami. Due to the effects of the curse, the writer now stated an entirely different objective for their mission, that is to eliminate anyone who has contracted the disease, even the villagers, and blame all of the murders they committed at the resistance. This is so different from their original goal, which was only to inspect the situation on the island, report the truth, and encourage Masahito. In the fourth lost text that we find near Higi village, the writer mentioned that they finally arrived and sent in their strongest fighter, Gongo Zaimon, to investigate the village in search of deserters. The team waited for Gongo Zaimon, but did not return and thought that he disappeared. The next day, the team sent in another member named Yamada and decided that if Yamada also disappears, the remaining members will eliminate everyone in the village. After the agreed time, neither Gongo Zaimon nor Yamada returned, and so the team gathered everyone in the village as part of their plan. However, the writer indicated that the village head, Washizu, was not among them, making the writer and his team feel suspicious. The final lost text we find at Fort Mume did not reveal what happened to the surviving team members after Higi village, but it showed something much darker. This is where the writer has finally gone mad from the curse, and we would read his final quotes. One tooth, two teeth, three teeth, something black oozed out of them. The treasure is here, itchy, it's so itchy, Kanemoto lost the bet, Suzuno's sword is still here, I still have some food, my skull feels itchy, no. I don't want my ears to grow inside my head. I don't want to listen to his voice. It is speculated that they were attacked by Washizu and thus retreated from the village until they reached Fort Mume. They tried to go back to their encampment, but because of the effects of the curse still lingering within them, they turned into mindless people and began killing each other. It seems that the writer was the only one who survived and has completely lost his sense of self. He then abandoned his mission and claimed all of the pirate loot to himself on an unmarked island near Fort Mume. Ultimately, the writer still died because we later learned that the curse also brings death to those affected. Now, what happened to the team members that disappeared? This we learn from Washizu's tale explored in the next chapter. This part is where it explores the behind the scenes of the lost text. Washizu's tale can arguably be the darkest topic the game has covered in a world quest. This quest is not available by default, as it is only available after we pray three times at the shrine located next to where Washizu sits, near the serpent's head, for four days. Upon being spoken to, Washizu will insist for us to pray to him at the shrine. Regardless of the questions we ask, including who he is, Washizu will only insist on praying to him and will soon hear our prayers. After we pray, Washizu will tell us to come back the next day for his reward for our faithfulness. Each time we come back the next two days, we will insist that we don't hear anything at all. But Washizu will tell us to continue praying. He will also continue to mention needing to find her and bringing her back because he demands it. Then, on the fourth day, as we are in the middle of the prayer, we will suddenly hear a mysterious voice telling us to watch our backs. This triggers the world quest, Sinister Introduction, and will start a battle against Washizu. Defeating him will reveal the incomplete notes and tattered paper quest items that are essential in revealing what truly happened in Higi Village. In his incomplete notes, it reveals that during the civil war, the Higi villagers have been receiving refugees from Jokotsu mine. Eventually, it became too much for the village to handle, to the point resources needed to be rationed, and the villagers needed to buy overpriced food from the pirates. Washizu, as the village head, took it to himself to maintain the shrine near the serpent's head in order to appease the spirit of the island and spare those affected by the Tatarigami. He also accuses Yasumoto to be a fraud who still doesn't have a cure. 
The tattered paper continues where the incomplete notes left off, stating that all the villagers can do is pray and hope that the Raiden Shogun hears them and ends the war. He wants to give the people hope, but finds that there's nothing to be done. The tattered paper ends with Washizu, saying he has begun to hear voices in his head, concluding that he has already gone mad from the curse. Now because we finally killed Washizu, we decide to collect Washizu's belongings, located in an exquisite chest behind a house in Higi village. This is where we find the final piece of the puzzle that solves the mysteries of the villagers and the two members of the small team from the Lost Text. This incomplete register is as follows. Higi Village Residential Register Torajiro, 13 years old, took ill and died. Shinji, 32 years old, took ill and died. Mitsuyo, 25 years old, took ill and died. Jin, 12 years old, took ill and died. Takaya, 55 years old, took ill and died. It is estimated that 13 people either took ill and died, slain in battle, or was lost at sea. A notable figure here is the name Kitada, where he's said to be on the run from the shogunate, implying that he is one of the deserters that the five-man team I mentioned earlier was looking for. This took place shortly after when the wards were shattered by the Orobashi loyalists. Whether old and young, the Tatarigami affected all of the villagers, and most of them died. This was the point where Washizu began to lose his mind and started sacrificing the rest of the villagers and some passersby in order to appease the Tatarigami and tried putting an end to the curse. This is noted by the change of wording from took ill and died to returned to oneness. It is heavily implied that the hymn Washizu speaks of is none other than Orobashi no Mikoto and the her he has been muttering during the traveler's worship is Chuji's mother. If we continue reading the incomplete register, nameless passerby A, sacrificed. Gon Gozaimon, 30 years old, sacrificed. Yamada, 23 years old, sacrificed. Senshiro, 4 years old, returned to oneness. Senshiro's mother, around 25 years old, returned to oneness. Akiharu, 23 years old, summoned. Some notable names here are Gongozaimon and Yamada, who were part of the team I mentioned earlier. It turns out they were sacrificed, together with a four-year-old and their mother. For the last line, it says, Nameless Outlander, seemingly young, about to take the bait. This explains why Washizu insisted that we continuously pray to the shrine for four days. Had we not been warned by the mysterious voice, we could have also been sacrificed by Washizu. It is speculated that the mysterious voice was Orobashi and was warning us about Washizu's ulterior motives. Now this gives a whole view of Orobashi as he was actually not a god described to be an aggressor, but rather a loving god who instead brought light to the people of Watatsumi. He actually only fought A due to the cause of erosion after all. The implication seems to be that the souls of divine beings cannot control the karma or resentment or anger of the god itself, specifically the Tatarigami. It is unlikely that he wishes for any of this to happen, since the serpent god was by all accounts a benevolent one. Now, this ends my video about the war on Yashiori Island. Going through these quests is quite possibly the darkest Genshin has made me feel. I had a fun time digging into all these letters, texts, and voice lines about Yashiori Island. The developers and writers did a great job with these world quests and gave us a darker tone of the game. We also got to see the effects of the Civil War on these innocent people who were just going on with their everyday lives. It adds to the saying that civilians are the ones to most suffer the wrath of war. Had the loyalists not broken the wards, then the Tatarigami wouldn't exist in the first place, and the people of Higi village and those affected with this curse could have not gone mad and died. If you have some thoughts about the video, as well as suggestions for future ideas, leave a comment and let us know. Thank you very much for watching, 
And if you've hung around till the end and think it deserves one, give this video a like. Once again, my name is Clementine, and as usual, until the next one, be safe and stay tuned.